Joining me now is the Director of Programs at the Michigan Science Center, Anna Sterner, back with us once again on the Megacast. Anna, thank you for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate having you on. So I got some exciting events that are coming up uh, fairly soon here or are uh, already ongoing over there at the Michigan Science Center. What are some of the cool things that are going on over there uh, at this time if people want to stop by and visit? Yeah, well, we are open to the public. We are really excited that since the holiday break, there's been so many people starting to join us for school field trips uh, and especially coming on the weekends, you know, especially when the weather starts to get a little bit colder and you're looking for something fun to do. The Michigan Science Center has all sorts of different activities, uh, exhibits and shows that you can come check out. Uh, there's always something new going on. Uh, we'll be previewing a new movie in our 4D theater next month. And so that'll be very, very exciting. Um, and this month, all month long, we are celebrating a theme that we call Arctic Expeditions. So since it's pretty cold outside, uh, we've come up with some different fun hands-on activities that explain the science behind scientists who actually explore these different Arctic landscapes and some of the research and tools that they use while they're there. And so uh, the Michigan Science Center is celebrating its 10th anniversary here in 2022 uh, all, all year long with some special events, uh, including films, live shows, uh, and more. What are some of the things that people can expect to experience uh, this year in, in that celebration of 10 years of the Michigan Science Center? Yeah, we're calling this year our 10th birthday for sure. Anniversary is a great word, but we really want it to feel like a party here all the time. Uh, so the Michigan Science Center, as always, we have those live stage shows, which are included with your general admission. And so on our main stage, you can see large scale demonstrations um, about physics and chemistry um, and engineering. And really what we want to focus on this year is inspiring people to feel like they are truly at the center of science when they are here at the Michigan Science Center. So we talk a lot about scientists that come right here from Detroit um, and people who are innovating in all different sorts of fields of science um, because we really want people to know that science is important no matter what you want to do. We want young people to feel like they are scientists while they're here. So we have all sorts of things for them to explore. Uh, this month we're talking about adaptations when we talk about Arctic science. Um, so we're talking about animals. Um, so we don't have live animals here, um, but we do want to talk about how science is important when we are studying new animals that we discover uh, here on Earth. Um, and then talking about what Arctic climates might be like on other planets as well so there's always a little bit of everything but like we said there are new shows that preview throughout the course of a year um, and those some of those are included with our general admission and some of those are in our paid theaters like our 4d theater and our imax dome theater which is on our lowest level so uh, we're joined by Anna Sterner, Director of Programs at the Michigan Science Center. Joining us on the Megacast, you can learn more by visiting mi-sci.org or my-sci.org uh, to learn more about all their programs uh, and register for some of these events as well. And so uh, you mentioned some of the theater experiences. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the ongoing uh, theater experiences and what families can expect to learn or, or at least be entertained by when they visit the Michigan Science Center? Yeah, absolutely. So currently the movie that plays in our 4D theater is called Backyard Wilderness. And it's all about nature and ecology that you can find in your own backyard, even here in Michigan. You don't have to go anywhere fancy to learn about science in your own backyard. But next month, the movie is going to be called Volcanoes. And that experience is going to be brought to us by Toyota. Um, but up on our fourth floor is probably the most exciting thing that we have because it won't be here for much longer. But we have a traveling exhibit that's called Math Alive. Um, so Math Alive is an 8,000 square foot exhibit it was brought to us by ford and exalta and it's all about how you use math in your day-to-day -day life um, we are celebrating something really exciting uh, coming up in just about a week or so um, but we are about to celebrate the kickoff of the winter olympics um, and so inside math alive there are exhibits about how scientists uh, are involved in things like sports and how athletes are actually amazing mathematicians so um, that's not something that people often think go hand in hand a lot of times people think that you're either an athlete or an academic um, but athletes truly are amazing they use math even without thinking about it sometimes um, and so we have exhibits that are about the science of snowboarding about the science of mountain biking and even skateboarding because there's so much math science and engineering that goes into those things and oftentimes these athletes are scientists outside of playing their sport as well uh, we're joined by Anna Sterner, the Director of Programs at the Michigan Science Center, joining us on the Megacast. And you mentioned uh, that we're just a few days away from the Winter Olympics beginning in Beijing, China. Uh, and uh, one of the hallmarks of the Winter Olympics are the, those ice rink related events, whether it be uh, men's and women's hockey, figure skating, um, 
uh, it is uh, men's women's hockey, figure skating, uh, there's speed skating. There's a lot of different events that are that are going to be happening on the ice at this year's Olympics, as they do at every Winter Olympics. Uh, and so you have a demonstration actually for us about the engineering that that goes into uh, making and maintaining these ice rinks for the Olympic Games. I do. So last time I came on the show, I think I was here for the Summer Olympics, and I focused a lot on the athletes, about um, some of the physics behind the amazing physics that really go into being an athlete, especially when it comes to things like gymnastics, um, people who are physically moving their bodies and kind of utilizing those principles of physics. Um, but this time I thought I would take a little bit of a different spin because we spend a lot of time thinking about the athletes when we focus on the Olympics, um, but we oftentimes forget that there is a lot of math, science, and engineering that goes into preparing for the Olympics. Olympics, especially when it comes to those ice rinks. Now, there are jobs for engineers uh, when it comes to the Olympics as well, which could be a really exciting way to use the things that you learn in school um, and the things that you're passionate about. But you mentioned that there are ice rinks for speed skating, for hockey, for figure skating. Um, and what's really interesting is that all those ice surfaces um, are obviously made of ice, but they're actually a little bit different from each other. Um, so ice surfaces vary in thickness and temperature, depending on the sport that you play. Um, so figure skaters actually prefer ice that's a little bit softer um, because they need to land on the surface of it and they don't want to trip and fall. Um, whereas speed skaters prefer ice that's uh, a lot firmer because they want to fly across the surface and not lose any of their speed while they move. Um, so I brought a demonstration that talks a little bit about the chemistry that goes into uh, these ice rinks um, because we don't actually make them out of pure water. Uh, when they are designing these ice rinks, they actually use something called a brine. So if you've ever seen a Zamboni traveling across the ice rink, maybe uh, here where the Detroit Red Wings play, um, it's not just water that they pour on the surface. It's actually a mixture of water and salt. Um, so I have a salt here, just regular old table salt, which we might know as sodium chloride. Um, but generally, when we're talking about that brine uh, on ice rinks, they use calcium chloride. Um, but I chose cal uh, sodium chloride for this because this is an activity that you can try at home. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the different temperature that comes into play when we use salt water versus fresh water. Now, Tyler, do you know the freezing point of just pure water? A uh, freezing point of pure water, I believe, is that 32 degrees? Yes, that's exactly right. Now, if you live in Canada, uh, maybe you're tuning in, you are very lucky because you get to say zero degrees Celsius. But yeah, 32 degrees Fahrenheit uh, is the freezing point of pure water. Now, when you add salt into the mix, we actually lower that freezing point. Water has to get colder uh, in order to turn into a solid, uh, which is good because those athletes who uh, have a preference for their ice sometimes want it to be very cold. So for example, speed skaters, that their ice rinks are generally about 21 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's much colder than the freezing point of pure water. So um, to do that, we add a little bit of salt here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to go fishing for ice cubes here. So if I take this string, which I have on, uh, this is just a regular piece of string, and I kind of set it down on my ice cubes. Um, you'll notice that nothing really happens. I'm just touching the ice cubes and then moving them around. But when I add a little bit of salt on top of that string, um, what is going to happen is that ice, which is right now frozen into a solid, is going to start to melt. Because once the salt comes into play, it needs to be much colder. Now, if we give this just a moment to kind of set, um, that ice is going to melt and then refreeze, which should allow me to pick up these ice cubes uh, with the piece of string. That's why we call this activity ice fishing. Mm -hmm. This is one of those activities that if you come to the Michigan Science Center uh, in the next few weeks, you can try this one yourself. Um, but of course, you can also try this at home. All I have is a cup of water, some ice cubes, some string, and some sodium chloride or table salt. Now, once we lift, you'll notice that that water or that ice has refrozen, and I've actually been able to pick it up on these pieces of string here. Um, so again, this, is, this happens because when the salt touches the ice cube, that ice melts. But the water then allows some of that uh, salt to dissipate or travel away, um, and that water then refreezes at its normal freezing point of 32 degrees once it's pure water again, um, and it attaches itself to the string. Um, so we love to talk about this type of stuff here at the Michigan Science Center because uh, we may not think about how much engineering and science really goes into designing these things like ice rinks. Um, it's important and a lot of those athletes actually have a, a strong preference and so those athletes actually become scientists and chemists themselves. They learn everything that goes into the ice rink that they're using because that's what makes them really good at their sport. Um, so if you are interested in sports or maybe you play a winter sport, now you know a little bit more about the science that goes into the ice itself. 
We're joined by Anna Sterner, Director of Programs at the Michigan Science Center with us on the Megacast. And so, uh, obviously, you have the experiment with the with the ice over there, which will be critical uh, in the operations of the Winter Olympics in Beijing this year, coming up in just a few days uh, when that begins. Uh, any other uh, exhibits or experiments that will be uh, going on at the Michigan Science Center to commemorate this year's Olympic Games over in Beijing? Well, like we said, Map Alive is probably your best bet, um, and it's only here until the end of April. Um, so it's here for a few more months, and so you definitely still have time to come check it out. Um, if you're interested in learning about all the math that goes into some of these extreme sports, um, that is a great way to connect it to uh, your real life. Um, but there are other exhibits inside Math Alive, too. So if you're not interested in sports, uh, math still matters to you. So there are exhibits in Math Alive all about how science goes or math goes into things like fashion design or or engineering or architecture. Um, and so you can actually take a 360 degree selfie in one of our exhibits to talk about the science behind those different cameras and the math that goes into creating a 360 degree picture. Um, and there's also math that goes into predicting things like extreme weather. And so there's a little bit of something for everybody inside Math Alive. You won't even feel like you're doing math. Um, like we said, it's a huge exhibit, 8,000 square feet. And so it's really fun and cool to be inside there. And we also have a math trivia game, which you can play along to. Uh, and we have that led live a few times every single day. Well, Anna, we thank you very much for joining us. And, and tell us more about uh, the programs that are coming up as uh, the Michigan Science Center celebrates its 10th birthday and as you get ready to celebrate the 2022 Winter Olympic Games in Beijing uh, and other great programs going on over there at the Michigan Science Center. Thank you for joining us. Thanks so much.